with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And I've got an interesting comparison video today that's actually going to pull in a baseball card. Uh, stay tuned to the end. I want to show you something that I just happened to stumble across that is absolutely mesmerizing and eye-popping and illogical to the absolute extreme. And we're going to compare a, a certain iconic, um, well-known baseball card with uh, two of the most iconic, well-known basketball cards uh, in the world and in the hobby. Maybe the two most recognizable basketball cards ever produced. So, um, without any delay, uh, let me get cranking. And again, I want to I want to say one more thing. I don't think there's an ultimate conclusion that I have. Essentially, I just want to reveal some data and let you guys look at it and then ponder and explain to me, if you think it makes sense, why it makes sense uh, on a couple of different fronts. And then if it doesn't make sense, then just agree with me. <laughs> so just basically, I'm asking for some viewer interaction in the comments to let me know what I'm missing and why I'm freaking crazy on this subject and maybe I'm beating uh, you know, some kind of conspiracy drum, which I hate people who do that. Um, uh, but I think after I reveal the data, I think everybody else is gonna scratch their head and say, holy crap, I didn't realize the numbers were so disparate. So without any delay, let me get you cranking. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we are going to, uh, let me pull this up over here and okay, I'm gonna get you over. This is my ha handy dandy, really super fancy Excel spreadsheet. It's actually a Google sheet, but um, I've got two, the two iconic basketball cards that I chose uh, were the 1986 Fleer Jordan and the 1980 Top Scoring Leaders. And the reason I chose those cards is because I think um, people oftentimes, uh, oftentimes weigh in and say, the PSA 10 is way overpriced, okay? And that's not what this video is about. It's not It's not about PSA 10 versus BGS 9.5 per se, okay? Uh, but I think a lot of people oftentimes observe uh, the, the high sales price of a PSA 10 Jordan Fleer and say, oh, I'd rather have, you know, five, six, seven, eight, whatever the case is, BGS 9.5. So we're going to look at that. And then the same thing happened with the Bird Magic. Now, the Bird Magic uh, PSA 10, you see uh, sell once a year, twice a year. The BGS 9.5, you almost never see it sell. So it's a little different comparison. We had to do a little bit of estimating, okay? Um, but with the uh, Jordan Fleer, no problem at all. We see PSA 10s and BGS 9.5 sell uh, too often, to be quite honest with you. So I've got those two of uh, the most iconic basketball cards ever produced. Sure, you got the Mikans, you got the Wilts, you got the Bill Russell, you got the Kareems, you got the, uh, you know, the LeBron Chrome, what the Kobe Chrome, whatever. You can do whatever you want and argue whatever you want, but I I'm going to put these two as uh, two absolute top level grail cards of some of the greatest players that have ever played the game. So one more thing I want to say is I think Jordan is by anybody's measure, either the best or second best player that's ever lived. I think he's the greatest. And then Bird and Magic are by anybody's standards. There is no person out there who could reasonably disagree that Bird and Magic are not both top 10 players of all time. Okay? Uh, I am going to let the cat out of the bag. The baseball card that we're going to talk about, okay? And I'm not a baseball card collector, but this is just purely a numbers crunch, is the Derek Jeter 93 SP foil rookie card. I don't think anybody out there thinks Derek Jeter is a top 10 baseball player of all time. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Remember, I'm just a basketball card collector. I was a big baseball card collector when I was younger, and I've watched enough baseball to have a pretty good grasp of where people fit historically. I understand uh, there's more to collectability, right? I'm not saying, um, you know, the best are always the most collectible. This is definitely not the case. We know that's definitely not the case uh, with Mickey Mantle and some other players. Um, but I don't think anybody would consider Derek Jeter even a top 10 player of all time. So we'll start with that distinction between the Jordan, the Bird Magic, which has got two top 10 players on the same card. The only rookie card, to my knowledge, in the sport of basketball that has that. And then the Derek Jeter SP Foil. I've got the Derek Jeter SP Foil blacked out here because I don't want to reveal it yet because I want to put an emphasis on some of the numbers that you're about to see. So uh, let's do this. So I've gotten broken down. Let's start with the 86 Fleer Jordan. The PSA 10 Jordan is a pop 319. It's grown by a few, a few uh, over the past year and a half, something like that. The BGS 9.5 is a pop uh, 535, okay? Um, Obviously, there's more BGS than there are PSA 10s, but it's not that crazy the difference, right? Um, there's uh, The BGS pop is 1.67x the PSA pop, right? So easier to find a BGS 9.5 
Um, but uh, PSA is a little bit more scarce, right? Uh, look at the gem percentage. And gem percentage, for, for those of you, is just basically, of all the cards that PSA graded, what percentage of those cards receive a PSA 10? Of all the cards that BGS graded, what percentage of those cards receive a BGS 9.5? I didn't include the few BGS 10s that are in here because it's not going to skew our numbers one way or the other. Uh, but you can see the gem percentage, 1.3 to 4.07, it's just a little bit more than three times. So it's, a, it's about three times as hard to get a PSA 10 as a BGS 9.5 for the 86 Fleer Jordan. Based on historical numbers, that might change over time, but that's what it is right now. Now look at the disparity in value, right? And this is what people always bark about and they bitch about. And I'm not here to say whether the Jordan PSA 10 is too much or too little, or the BGS 9.5 is too much or too little. I'm not getting into that. That's not what this. Uh, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is the actual as of right now, disparity between the values of the two cards. Now, the P PSA 10 just sold for 168, so we're just gonna use 168. Could it sell for 190 tomorrow? Yeah, and then it would skew our numbers a little bit, right? Or, or quite a bit. Um, in the BGS 9.5, uh, actually, I used the average of the last three sales because a bunch of them actually just recently sold. So 34,200 for the BGS 9.5, and again, subgrades obviously altered that value up or down. Gym plus plus sells for a lot more than men gym, oftentimes. But we're going to use an average of 34,200 just for our analysis today. Uh, so the PSA 10 is 5x the BGS 9.5 approximately right and give or take like a bgs 9.5 could sell for a little bit more so could a psa 10 so it could you know that that ratio could skew but that's where it is right now now we know that there was a run in 2021 where the psa 10 went absolutely bananas into the 700s and 800s but you know what the bgs 9.5 may not have kept pace with it but it it lifted with it and now it's coming down with it so right now that's a 5x ratio okay so just watching this, ask yourself, would I rather five BGS 9.5s or would I rather one PSA 10, right? That's your question. You know, all things considered. Again, subgrades matter, the particular PSA 10. I get all that stuff. That's just what I want to I want to focus on that. PSA 10, uh, Jordan Fleer is worth five times what the BGS 9.5 is. All right, let's go to our next card. The 1980 top scoring leaders, Bird Magic. Even a greater disparity. If you look at the pops, obviously, it's really hard to get a gem of this card because a bunch of little kids. These were three cards in a, you know, in a panel, and they were asked to perforate, and so people perforated them, and so that eliminates a lot. But that being said, there's still 17,938 graded. And by the way, as you can see, there's 37,583 Jordans graded just by PSA and BGS. Again, I realize that you know 3,000 of those are shit it could be 5,000 of those were probably cracking resubs with people trying to get rich quick I, I get all that but let's just use the numbers that PSA and BGS give us and let's assume uh, that it is 37,583 that have been graded by PSA and BGS combined the bird magic is about half almost exactly half 17,938 have been graded uh, only 48 combined gems that's nuts let that sink in so um, you know uh, 23 PSA 10s, uh, 25 BGS 9.5s. You never see the 9.5. You never see the 9.5. Um, the PSA 10 has a 0.17% gem, okay? 0.17%. Um, the BGS 9.5 has a 0.56. So it's about a 3 to 1 ratio. Again, the odds of getting a PSA 10 gem are about three times as hard as getting a BGS 9.5. And again, we're not talking about BGS 10s because there are a couple, believe it or not. I didn't realize that. Uh, but look at the value disparity here. I think most people would look at this. I probably should have included PSA 9 in here as well because it would have been even more fascinating. But uh, 522,000 was the last PSA 10. We saw that card run up to, I think, 750, maybe 800,000 at some point. But 522 last sold. And then the last BGS 9.5 didn't sell. It hadn't sold since 2019. So we had to use card ladder value. Okay, And card ladder kind of estimates the value based on the index for Bird and Magic and for the index of this particular card. And we get 68,000, right? And so just to be clear, you know, here it is on card ladder. There's the last one that sold in 2019 15,000 bucks there it is card ladder estimates that card would be worth about 68 565 today so that's kind of where we got that number 68,000 that is a PSA 10 
to, to BGS ratio of 7.67. So even a greater disparity than the Jordan. So if you think that the PSA 10 Jordan is overvalued in comparison to the BGS 9.5, uh, the PSA 10 uh, Bird Magic tops from 1980 is has an even greater disparity. Again, using averages, but let's just say it's somewhere between five and eight. Okay, so similar to the Jordan, but probably even a greater disparity. We're not really sure. At one point, it certainly was a greater disparity because the PSA 10 ran all the way up to like 750, 800. Now I want to talk about the 1993 SP Foil Jeter. First of all, the first thing that I want to kind of focus on here is uh, this. Um, this is not a rare card. Uh, well, first of all, let's start with this. Jeter is not a top 10 baseball player of all time. Uh, number two, this is not a rare card. Okay, the card is not rare. Just like the Jordan is not rare. Just like the 1980 Tops of Red Magic is not rare. But this is really not rare. Between PSA and BGS, the Jeter has been graded 40,000 plus times. That's more than the Jordan, right? Which is like the most graded card in the universe, right? We talk about that, uh, you know, going back. Obviously, we're not talking about the Dodgich and the, and the Zion Base Prism and all that stuff, but this Jeter has been graded over 40,000 times. I'm going to reveal the numbers here, and you guys are going to just die. Uh, so let's do this. Let's kill this, and I'm going to show you. So uh, PSA 10 has given out 21 PSA 10s. Um, and <clears throat> BGS has given out 275. Look at the gem percentage. If you thought it was impossible to get a PSA 10 on a bird magic or a one in 100 shot, and again, that was back in the day, a one in 100 shot of getting a PSA 10 on a Jordan 86 Fleer, look at the gem percentage on a PSA 10 for Jeter. By the way, if you want to convert it from a percentage to aggregate numbers, that is a one in one, worse than a one in 1,000 chance. There is less than one out of 1,000 that PSA deems a PSA 10. With all of those packs available and cards being pulled out of packs, that's absurd. Like there, you can't tell me one in 1,000 cards has a chance to get a PSA 10. I know they're condition sensitive. I know it's now 30 years ago. I know how 90s cards grade. Trust me, I know as well as anybody how hard it is to grade cards in the 90s. But one in 1,000 um, seems extreme. I want you to look at the value of that card. $204,000 for that Jeter. And then look right below it. Pop 275 from BGS, but the gem percentage uh, on BGS is 1.5%. So similar to the Jordan PSA 10, which is absurdly low. It's ridiculously low. But how can one company grade a card 16 times harder than another reputable company? Probably the two most reputable companies, along with SGC, but probably the two most reputable grading companies out there. PSA grades it 16 times as hard. Like we looked at the Jordan, they graded it three times as hard. We looked at the Bird Magic, they graded it three times as hard. And now the Jeter SP Foil, they grade it 16 times as hard. That just seems really odd to me. So my first, uh, you know, solicitation for input would be, let me know in the comments what you think that's all about. Um, and don't tell me it's condition sensitivity because the two companies are grading the exact same card. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the first question is why? Why? Why is PSA so hard on the Jeter? Uh, the second issue is the value disparity. Oh my gosh, have you guys ever seen a value disparity between PSA 10 and BGS 9.5 like this? I'm about to reveal what that X is, but it's pretty staggering. Remember, the Jordan was about 5X difference between PSA 10 and BGS 9.5. The 80 top scoring leader was about, we had to use an estimate, so let's say somewhere between 5 and 8X, right? Big margins, like big margins. If you gave me 8 Bird Magic BGS 9.5s, I would take those 8 over 1 PSA 10. I just would. I just think in the long run, I would rather have those 8, as, you know, from a purely investment standpoint. Um, and then the Jeter here, and again, why is it 204 to 6,000? It's because this is 16X, and this 16X results in this being 21 pop out of 21,000 plus PSA graded. More have been graded by PSA than BGS, and the pop is 21. And so basically, PSA has created this absurd scarcity uh, for whatever reason, again, I invite you to comment below and tell me what I'm missing here. I am just passing along some crazy numbers of some iconic cards. 
but the Jeter is 34X in PSA 10, the BGS 9.5. 34. Think of what a stack of 34 Jeter BGS 9.5s would look like. And then ask yourself, why in God's name would one PSA 10, like logically speaking, I get the I get the created scarcity, the, the scarcity that's been created, but but think to yourself logically, why would one PSA 10 be worth the same as 34 BGS 9.5s when it's not like that with other cards? The the the, the grading, the gem percentages, the disparities doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like there's value in these six thousand dollar Jeter cards and. For transparency purposes, you guys have watched my channel. You know I don't own a baseball. I don't own a baseball card except I have four. I, oh, I have five. I have uh, one uh, Acuna card, one Acuna card that I bought from FOMO. Shame on me. And then four Jordan baseball cards that are not worth anything, really. Uh, so a 34x disparity between a PSA 10 and a BGS 9.5. I have no dog in this hunt. I don't care. I don't own a Jeter card. I'm not going to buy a Jeter card of any type. Um, I just... I. It's not a rare card. The, the the disparity is 34x. The disparity was created by the gem percentage. The gem percentage resulted in the absurd disparity between the pop where it's over, what is that, 13, 14 times as many uh, BGS 9.5s, 13 times as many BGS 9.5s as PSA 10s, which resulted in a value which is 34 times, right? Shouldn't the value be... Kind of similar. I mean, look up here at the bird magic. The BGS pop and the PSA pop are the same, and it's an 8x difference. Down here, the BGS pop is 13x, and it's a 34x difference. This all just seems really strange to me. Uh, let me know in your comments. Uh, do you think 34x for a PSA 10 Jeter over a BGS 9.5 Jeter is too large of a disparity? Too much of a premium paid for PSA 10 where people strictly scroll over to the right in the PSA column and look at the pop and think, oh, let's do this math and get the... I don't know how you get there with applying logic. I just don't understand it. Again, I'm not a baseball card collector, but I think this... Uh, transcends the uh, the particular sport that you're collecting. I think it trans. I mean, we're comparing a card from the '90s with two cards from the '80s. So I don't think uh, you know there's too big of a difference. Um, you know, again, between the condition sensitivity of the cards. But even if there was, you know, PSA and BGS are grading the same card. So why are they grading it 16 times harder at PSA than BGS when they're not doing that with the bird? They're not doing that with this. They're not doing that with any card. I mean, I do explore the card episodes every single week with the freaking Jordan cards. The disparity is never 16x. Like, there's never a PSA, you know, 3% uh, gem percentage on a Jordan insert that I'm looking at. And then BGS is like 50%. Like, that doesn't happen. That's 16x. Like, that's just, it doesn't exist in any other card. It just seems odd that it exists in this card. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, some of you guys crunch the numbers a lot more than I do. So maybe there's some other cards out here where there's a similar type of disparity between the scrutiny applied by PSA and BGS. But anyway, I just want to throw that out there. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you own a PSA 10, I'm sorry. I mean, this might piss you off. If you own a BGS 9, 0.5 it might make you happy again i'm just some dude who collects basketball cards but when i saw a recent sale and then i was on card ladder and i clicked down i was like i wonder what a bgs 9.5 is i was like damn there's only 21 jeters i know that's like one of the most common cards in the world it's not rare at all and i was like god they grade the hell out of that they really grade that hard at psa and so i switched over and looked at the bgs and i was like well there's plenty of bgs's and oh my God, it was like 6,000 compared to 204,000. And honestly, I don't know where those cards have been. The PSA, I'm assuming, well, let's see, I've got it pulled up. The PSA had to have at one point been much, much higher. Let's look at the PSA 10. Let's look at the PSA 10 over the last two years. Uh, I mean, for God's sake, the PSA 10 in April on April 30th was 600,000. The BGS 9.5 on April 30th. Oh my God, 25,000. So it could have been 600,000 and 25,000. I mean, again, I don't know what that ratio is, uh, but one, no, wait, one BGS right here was 8,400. So it was 8,400 to 600,000 at some at one point, which is, God, I'm doing the math on my phone right here real quick. Um, 600. That's like a 70X difference between a PSA 10 and a BGS 9.5. Uh, sorry, I wasn't screen sharing. I mean, is that nuts? Is that crazy? I don't know. What am I missing? Somebody tell me. Uh, I just think it's funny to look at stuff like that. There it is. There's the 600,000 on April 30th, 2022. Did it ever get higher than that? Good Lord. 
No, that's the highest it ever got, 600,000. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments. Get me back on path, right? Put my brain back together because it just exploded thinking that I could have 70 Jeter BGS 9.5s for the price of one PSA 10. That just doesn't seem right to me. Uh, but uh, keep collecting, stay positive in the hobby, and peace.